Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, season two of True Detective, episode three, maybe tomorrow. Robert Abley, John Iaderola, Alonzo Duralde, Ben Mankiewicz is on assignment. Uh, so, Ray lives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was faking everyone out last week because I've seen uh, the first three episodes that were sent in advance. So oh, I wanted to like bluffing, actually, yeah. I wanted to give everybody a chance to kind of like think that maybe I was right. So they could enjoy the surprise <laughs> that he was actually alive. Yeah. Very clever. Very clever, Robert. Uh, yeah, no, I suspected there was there was either it was either gonna be salt or or, or, or riot, or, yeah. you know, bullets or whatever. Yeah. I, I was a bit thrown off when they, they were panning across the room and you saw the little pellets on the ground. Yeah. I guess they leaked out of the beanbag or whatever the fuck it was yeah. they hit him with. Um, so I think, especially after watching this episode, it seems like this was the right decision to make because he makes the show stronger and more interesting. And sure. he's, he's perhaps the single most interesting character aside from maybe Vince Vaughn. Um, but I did on some level lose a little bit of respect because they know what they're doing <laughs> when they yeah, did that. It, it's a very serialized kind of ending. But I, he, I, And he didn't even get kind of in, injured. He's like a little bit injured. But, <laughs> but, but he's going to like stop drinking. I mean, they're, they're, they're turning his storyline into a redemption thing. So he's going to stop mm -hmm, drinking and mm -hmm. get his life back together and solve this crime. And then probably And then die. he'll die at the end. He's exactly. Just, yeah. <laughs> he, he's, the old him died. Yes. The, the See, new Ray is born. Uh, Fred Ward... I know. Yeah. Give it up for Fred Ward. How awesome is Fred. he on this? Obviously known for Tremors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all I've seen him in. And Rainbow among other Rainbow things. Williams. He's quite good. The right stuff. You Rainbow know. Williams. Um, yeah, no, he's brilliant. And 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 at first when I saw him, I was like, is that... That's the board. Like, well, my wife didn't recognize him until his scene in the, in the scene, real world, yeah. not the first scene. She didn't in recognize that dream him. He was yeah, quite he grizzled. Like, yes. Very much well, he, so. I mean, he was the perfect casting in terms of that. Like, what a life in... The, like, we've seen sort of glimpses into the life in this place, but what an actual life lived there would do to you that's pretty much what it would do to you. Yes. And yeah. It's great when a character like that then has to has to go undergo a physical so the doctor can say, um, do you want to live? Yes. <laughs> and I like the idea of the badge in Lucite. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 your badge in loose sight. I, th I, was, I, th I think that's a great touch. I don't know. If that's real, maybe that's real. Maybe that really happens when you retire. But I don't, that, that, Is it like bronzing baby shoes yeah, or something? Yeah. It's a thing. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to find out. Yeah, and I wonder. Uh, so obviously they, they started off with the dream sequence with, with that awesome musical number. I mean, mm -hmm. just awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have his father sort of interpreting. I mean, it's a dream, but it's his father predicting that he will die implying that he was never as strong as he thought. Like, he thought he had been sort of damaged by his mm -hmm. father, but his mm -hmm. father saying, no, you were always that way. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, so, I mean, it's not like Simeon's father, who we know was openly abusive and almost killed his son. Right. We know that he's kind of racist and kind of old school, but they didn't really provide us with a lot of reason to believe that his father is necessarily the reason the way, that he is the way he is. Whereas with some of the other characters, like... Uh, Rachel McAdams and right. Simeon, they seem to have been shaped by the experience they had as children. That's true. Yeah, we are getting a yeah. lot of dads on this show. I bad, yeah. bad, 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 a lot of bad dads. Yeah. yeah. It's like Game of Thrones in that way. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, so overall, I, I am glad that they brought him back, I guess. This was an interesting episode for him. Once again, he gets off, like, he gets an offer to sort of step back from his son. Mm -hmm. They feel like they need to drive that home. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that was pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, there was. Uh, I, I loved the Rachel McAdams uh, uh, in the station scene with the 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 suitor who doesn't get it. Yes, that was just like, oh, ooh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> no, know, I said but... dignity. <laughs> that was not <laughs> dignity. Yeah. First, first oh. reference to teeth, though. I mean, like teeth, teeth came up in that line mm. sheet, the thread. Oh, that's right, in the baggie. And then, yeah, and then, then oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That's eh? true. Yeah, okay. It was actually in a bag. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Point. <laughs> um, yeah, she's. A, that was a great scene for her. Like, she is a very interesting character in that regard. Like, mm. there's a lot of characters that they want you to believe don't take shit from nobody. Mm -hmm. She really doesn't take no, no shit from nobody. She was willing to basically be hit by that truck uh, to get a shot at that right, guy. Right, right, right. And I guess we're hinting at like she's been told, okay, we want stuff on. Del Coro, you know, I'm and I'm not saying sleep with him. I'm saying <laughs> so make him think you might. <laughs> and we're thinking maybe she like has sympathy for this guy who has gone through this thing and now wants to like, maybe change. He's drinking coffee in front of her, and she has has overheard him have the you know the hearing about his son, and like you know, and she's thinking. And then he at the end goes like you know, tell me what the state has on me. And so do you think? Do we think she's gonna like they're gonna team up and kind of like go against their superiors and, and the people that have hold, uh, have a hold over them to solve this case? It's possible. I could see where at some point, because they're, because everyone is sort of enmeshed in this whole, like, 
Well, we want you to solve this case, but we also want you to find this right. other thing that at some point the three of them are going to feel like they're going to bond in a way yeah. of like they're trying to dump all this stuff on us, but we're grunts of the ground level yeah. and we just want to get our jobs done. And so, yeah, I can see them sort of like teaming up like over, she, against the powers that be. Rachel McAdams is going to find out that, that Taylor Kitsch is gay, right? I mean, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's by the next, like, the way that they're going to bond, right? Yeah. Yeah. They'll go shoe shopping. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, you know, I, don't, do. I don't see him reacting well to that being revealed to other people, though. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's got a ways to go on that one. Considering yeah. how he handled that scene with his, with his yeah. ex-Iraq uh, buddy. Yeah. 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 Alleged ex-lover. <laughs> Uh, they weren't <laughs> obvious about it. But sure, they no, were. no. Um, it wasn't clearly stated. So, it it <laughs> seems like right now that we will see them, those three, teaming up. Like, we finally had Rachel McAdams and Taylor Kitsch have a good long arc together in this, mm. in this episode. And I imagine that maybe in the next episode, maybe one after, we'll have, you know, the two guys pair up. But this also doesn't really seem like the sort of show where three people would all get along. And they mm. haven't really set up anything to drive them apart just yet. Right, um, but it doesn't. It, I, I can't but imagine all, all three of them. Well, successfully and none of them wants to work with the other. I mean, they were all set up as, uh, do I really have to work with these other ones? Right. I mean, and mm -hmm. so I think the fact that they all have things hanging over their head, coming from either superiors or people who have a, you know, have have a hold on them, like like uh, Colin Farrell does with with Vince Vaughn, they're going to chafe against that, and then that's how they're going to bond. I mean, mm -hmm. that's I, how I, although I mean, Kitch at this point is so emotionally closed off, it's going to be tricky, right. I think, for him to become close to them, but. Who knows? Maybe they'll help him clean up a dead hooker situation or something, and then <laughs> yeah. they'll bond over that. I don't know. Uh, Vince Vaughn, though, I gotta say, I, you know, I was, I was, when he, when the casting of him was announced, I was a little dubious. Mm. I haven't been on his train in a while, but. Wow, this episode, he's, episode, yeah. he's got a lot going on, he's and had he's some of the so hardest, intense. He's had some of the hardest dialogue to speak, because he has some of the most, like, kind of, like, overly macho, you know, tortured kind of, like, dialogue. And and yet, just his sheer presence, you're scared of the guy. Mm. Yeah. Um, I love that his storyline is basically, like, like kind of the anti-Pacino in Godfather 3. It's like, instead of, instead of I want to get out, and they pull me back in, it's like... I really wanted to get out, and now I kind of have to get back in. Yeah, so can keep, you help? They keep pushing me out, and I want in. I, I, I yeah. don't want back in to what I had before. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, that whole opening sequence at the sperm bank with uh, oh with Kelly Riley, where it's like, uh, take a shit, I got a gun to my head, make it good, you know. That, that was that is that was his wife. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. She looks different for some reason. Uh, yeah, that, that was a tense scene. That poor guy, man, he just needs like a hobby, an outlet of some sort. He's got nothing going on. <laughs> Model train, knitting, He's all yeah. He's no, all do, Maybe him and uh, Colin Farrell can do some modeling together. There you or something go. Like that. They, you know, not as much as they'd like to, but um, yeah, he had, a, he had a number of great scenes. I mean, he had the, the obviously the sperm bank scene, but then he also had his scene with, the, with Colin Farrell. Um, right. Where yeah. we saw the first the, the, an ominous tone directed towards Colin Farrell from before he had seen like this sort of oh, all the same paternal page here. Yeah. Right. together, but I mean he kept driving home like I'll forgive the stridency this time. <laughs> um, and so I mean not, not that Colin Farrell really cares if no. he lives or dies, no. but I, I could see I could see something happening there. And also um, I don't I don't remember who I was reading um, some stuff of uh, impressions this episode, and somebody said. They could totally see Vince Vaughn having set up his wife to be raped, so that he could then turn the guy over oh. and get a cop in his pocket. Look, you could you could tell Frank is the kind of guy that when he saw like he had a glass of water instead of a drink, he thought something's up. Yeah, I mean, and didn't and like it. Didn't like it. No. Yeah, he was last episode. It's all about you know I want you to get better, but now you're getting better. I'm not. A this big is fan not of the that. Ray yeah. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but and then of course the amazing kitchen scene, which. Uh, you know, is is a a trope I kind of dig in in these sort of stories where you have the crime boss who has to be ready to face challenges from mm -hmm. underlings. Yes. You know, and so the idea of like, oh, you think I'm soft now? Really? Well, here yeah. goes. You know, yeah, it's the you can the leave your ring, you can leave your rings on. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That was a good line. It's De Niro with yeah. the baseball bat yeah. and Untouchables. Totally. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, that was a great scene. And like again, I think that that combined with his it feels like growing comfort delivering admittedly like you said macho but artificial lines like he's yeah. not intended to speak like a human actually would but then you also has have his physicality and you get reminded oh yeah Vince Vaughn's six five <laughs> he's actually a really big guy and he took that guy down easily uh yeah I like that okay I have a uh, question that's that was impressive shoot sure. Um, movie set scene. I was just about to Terry ask. Terry Fukunaga, are, are, are we, are, is That's, the director, uh, is the director a, a riff on, the, like the, the writer's take on Terry Fukunaga? 
Ooh. That's what I've read, but I didn't watch the first Oh, is, so that's been... Really? Some other people were discussing it in, in reviews, but did, did they Did they change? I just looked at the director and thought, like, this is supposed to be Kerry Fukunaga, or his take, uh, his take on well, it. Well, that's kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, you know. <laughs> I don't know. That was just Can't we all just get along? <laughs> uh, wh what, where is that pro plot thread leading us? The whole, the missing, the, the car and the... The, 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 the well, they're just trying to find out... The relationship with, with uh, dead guy, Casper. <laughs> Where's well, the I mean, Casper thread, or where's the car thread? To Both. find the murderer, the, the, the whole just, person they're, they're messing with, yeah, uh, with Simeon. Like, right. now they've killed a second person, like, they're still out there. Right. Is it the Russian? Are they in league with them? Is it some other group entirely? Um, I mean, just, that's, that's just, the I'm, core, that's that's the thread they have to find out. Sure, yeah, no, 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 I mean, I get it in terms of, like, the, the, the steps. I'm just wondering if there's something larger there that's oh. being hidden, or... Oh, I it, don't know. I, th I think it's right now a means to get to some part of Casper's life that will lead to something else. So mm. it just happens to go through somebody who had access to a movie set and, 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 a, and, a, and a prop, you know, and a car guy, you know. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. so. And so we're, we're supposed to believe that they are now being followed, right? Yeah, because that the guy was... Yeah, so gets yeah. burned exactly yeah, yeah. when they get there. Right. Um, which, I, I mean, that seems much less likely to be the Russians and more likely to be one of the police departments or Simeon's organization. I mean, and we saw that one cop following around Taylor Kitsch earlier in the episode, taking pictures of him. Oh, um, right, right, right. It's, the, maybe the it's thing. a Vinci yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, when, when Colin Farrell went to the apartment in the last episode, I mean, you... We all saw the car as he walked into the apartment. That that was the car from the oh, Casper. that was the car. Yeah, when he's when he's going, there's a pan of you know Colin Farrell, and as he goes across to go into the apartment, the car is sitting on the on that on mm. the block, the car that Casper was in. Oh, I mean, I I, Why would I you picked still that be up. driving that car around because it was such an old <laughs> car. How do you not notice that? It's such yeah, an old it's car. Kind of yeah, it's sort of generic right. and I guess uh, mm. <laughs> only on true only on true detective would there be a nightclub called Lux Infinite. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, you, when you said about the the Russians and the oh, well, I he had the scene. It, Simeon had the scene in the in the club or whatever, mm -hmm. where you know he he's increasingly suspicious. Simeon is that the Russian is behind or the Russians trying to screw him. Right. And then you had what seemed like I don't know, sort of an unnecessary little scene between the Russian and the wife. Like, what's that about? The little kissing on the hand and stuff as he goes away. Maybe they're trying to set up something for later. Oh, oh no, um, I remember now. The the, the Bel Air house. <laughs> oh, that scene was that insane oh, scene. Yes, um, yeah. uh, somebody pointed out on Twitter that apparently Vernon, which a lot of people are saying is the real Vinci, oh, that Vernon, the okay. mayor of Vernon and his wife, uh, oh. even though he was technically as an elected official supposed to be living there, uh, they had a house in Hancock Park. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this sense. is again ripped from the headlines. But yeah, that was. That was so sleazy and weird. <laughs> I know. And, uh, Did you just have a party? No. No. <laughs> the wife cutting out like the couture <laughs> outfits from the yeah. magazine and the big, you know, it's for my eyes. It's yeah. My eyes. But <laughs> what was so that thing? I, what was that thing that she was? That's like a that's a like a vapor. It's a it's a okay. pop thing. <laughs> okay. It's for realness. Yeah. For my eyes. Um. So I, I mean <laughs> that scene obviously was useful in that you had you had some more Taylor Kitsch actually in in bright light and everything and, yeah. and interacting with Rachel McAdams but. I don't know, in terms of, like, you were just asking about the tracking down the, the person with the car and all that. It does seem like we're now three episodes in, and that is the thing that's being investigated. Like, I feel like we got close at the close of the episode to moving to the next phase. And I feel like we've had a lot of scenes of people talking to hookers and people who look like they could be hookers mm. about which hooker it was that, that, that <laughs> Casper slept with. Like, I feel like we had right. a lot of scenes right. like that. Yeah. We could probably progress a little bit by now. I, I did I did love Rachel McAdams' strategy of like of sending Taylor Kitsch to go talk to the hooker. Yeah. You're the pretty one. You go talk to her. looks is that a fucking e-cigarette? <laughs> I love that they got yeah, it yeah. <laughs> I would have liked a robot oral sex joke, but unfortunately yeah. they, 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 there's you no time. Can't, you can't have everything. Yeah. So yeah, so things are rolling along. This is uh, we're we're getting meaty here. Oh, yeah. and, uh, really fast. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Like you were, I think oh. you mentioned something about that. This is going to become sort of the um, for Colin Farrell his redemption story. I yeah. mean, he saves her life at the end oh, of the episode. True. That's true. Like, yeah, he's true. not a very heroic man. Like no. he's a brave man. Like right. he'll go and beat someone down in, in broad daylight. But and he wants. Some, I love that he wants something immediately though. It's like I saved your life. Now please tell me what the yeah. state has <laughs> on me. I just saved your life. I'm gonna cash in that shit right <laughs> yeah. now. Right. As he was like selling the rib injury, like he was a FIFA player. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could just, when they started chasing that guy, they both had to go over the fence. I could just sense him going like, oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, uh, we'll be back next week with more. Uh, well, you're not going to be here, and you're not going to be here, but we'll, we'll, we'll patch Sorry. something together. See you then. <laughs>